Okay, so a couple of years ago I made this whistle just from a piece of hazel wood and I used my drill powered lathe for that. So today we're going to have a go and see if we can make something with rather simpler tools than that. So we won't be using the drill powered lathe, we'll just be using maybe the electric drill and a few hand tools. We're going to be using this timber today. This is a stick of elder wood that I've had in, in my garage for about a year or so, so it's nicely dried out. Elder is quite good because it has a core, it has a little hole down the centre of each branch full of pith. So that will help us drill it out without wandering off centre. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is square off the end of this stick and lose that big split piece on the end there. So I think we're going to cut about there. We'll just square that off. Around about here, I reckon. There we can see, in the middle of that wood, there is that pithy centre. But we're going to be drilling out a bit bigger than that anyway. So you can do this with other kinds of wood, it's just elder is particularly good because it already has some of the hollowing out done for us. Now I'm not going to cut my piece of wood completely off because it's going to be much easier to hold on to and to work with if I keep it long. So I'm actually going to leave it right on the end of the stick here and I'm going to just, when I'm working to peel the bark and to shave it down, I'm going to keep it in one piece and then we'll cut it off later when we're happy that we've got the outside done. So let's get that fixed in the vise, just loosely, and then we're going to drill out this end. So I'm going to use these three drills, I think that's, uh, what have we got, 5 millimetres, 8 millimetres and 10 millimetres. We'll start with the smaller one, just to get us started. And this will be very easy because I'm just drilling out the pith. Let's go down a bit deeper than that. Give ourselves some material to work with. Right. Next, we'll drill out to eight millimeters. Now this one I'm going to go a bit slower and more gently, if I can. So that's got us a hollow tube, at least maybe that long there. So the next thing to do is just to peel off this bark and shape the outside, which I'm just going to do with, you can use any sharp knife for this, but I'm just going to use this disposable craft knife. Now it is sometimes easier to peel bark from sticks like this when they're green. I have found, but this is working okay. Now what I'm doing here, I'm actually not just peeling the bark off, I'm taking a thin layer of the wood away as well. Just really to try to thin down those walls and make this into a more delicate whistle than it would be otherwise. We can't drill out the middle anymore, but what we can do is pare down the outside a little bit, just carefully. This wood's very nice and dry now, so we won't have to wait for this to dry out on its own. It's already nicely seasoned and dried. So, that's one end of the whistle. So I think what we'll do now is we'll plug up this end to block it off and then we can shape this and then we can cut the uh, cut the other end of the whistle off and then think about what else we're going to do now to make the plug for the end I just happen to have this little piece of oak that was left over from my wooden spoon project that I made last week and we just need to make sure that it's greater than the diameter of the hole in both dimensions and it is so now we're just going to take this piece of oak and carefully whittle it to a round, a cylindrical profile. If you use, do this with green wood, with a green wood stick, there's a risk that your plug will shrink and fall out of the end of your whistle. 
Right, so starting to look round, let's offer that up and see. We've got some more whittling to go before we can fit that in there. I'm just turning it as I go because I want to try to whittle it evenly all the way round. And you can just look at it at the end and if it looks like it's a little bit off circular, just turn it and get to the bits where it needs whittling down further. Now I'm not creating a whole rod like this because I actually only need a fairly small plug. Let's have a look at that. It needs a bit more taken off but not much. I'm getting close now. Good, that fits. Okay, so what we're going to do is go find some glue, glue that in, and then cut it off. A little dab of that on the end here. Not too much. And we'll put that in there. Now I need to leave that to dry now before I can cut that off and then we'll shape this end before we work on the other end of the whistle and also the, the voicing hole. Okay, so that glue's more or less dry now. We're gonna cut that piece off and then shape the end. Nice. So we we just shape that end round. We'll just work on that end and shape it. I want to kind of flatten it off so I can drill a lanyard hole through there. Elder's very nice hard wood, so I've just got to take little shavings off at a time here. Okay, I'm afraid we lost some footage right there in the middle, so I'll just explain what you've missed in this video. I'm really sorry about that. Camera failed, and here we are. So, we shaped this end of the whistle, drilled a hole, and then I drilled a hole in this side. And what I did then is, having made that hole, I just squared off this this end of it with needle files and then you need to make a kind of shallow cut in there now normally you just do that with a um, you just have a flat cut in there but I thought I'd go for a little bit something a bit decorative so using the needle files I've just filed in three little grooves and I think that actually looks quite nice so then I cut off at this end and I've then whittled a piece of a piece of oak so that it occupies all but a little narrow slot at the top of the hole there and then the next thing you have to do is you push that in and you ne it needs to come to almost that voicing hole there but it always takes a little bit of adjustment and so you have to actually just experiment with it push it in and then blow through that gap with this piece still on there so I'll just exp I'll just demonstrate that now so there we go so we've um, so it always takes a bit of adjustment but once you've figured out where it goes then you put glue on this piece here get it back in again and again test with the voice just blowing through there just to make sure it's in the right place now while that glue dries I'm just going to wedge a piece of scrap wood into that slot there just to keep it pressed down against this side. When that glue's dry, I'm gonna cut this piece out and make a little mouthpiece. So it will resemble that. That's the whistle I made before. Okay, so the glue has now dried. And what we're going to do is rather than just cut this off, I'm gonna cut a little mouthpiece here. So I'm actually going to leave this piece glued in and I'm gonna to try to cut diagonally down there and out that way there because I can clamp this piece in the jaws of my workbench without worrying about crushing it. Obviously, if I clamp the whistle itself, 
I could end up spoiling it. I'm going to use a junior hacksaw for this because I can get finer control of the cut. Yeah, so I'm now going to cut that off and then I'm going to carefully cut into the end here. In order to clamp this whistle in the jaws of the workbench without crushing it, I'm just going to wrap it in several layers of cloth like this. And then we can clamp it nice and tight and I'll be able to cut vertically down there. And then Okay, so we're just going to give this a little test now. That's pretty good. So, so yes, just a bit more sanding to do. I won't bore you with the whole process. I'll show you when it's finished. But the rest of it's just going to be sanding, smoothing off odd corners, and then finishing with a bit of oil. Okay, so that's the finished whistle with a coat of oil on it. And so I made this with just a drill and a few hand tools and some sandpaper. And... That's just to demonstrate that you don't need the drill powered lathe or a wood turning lathe to make a whistle like this. Now I used a stick of elder which was easy to drill out because of the central column of pith it has in the branches. But you could use any kind of piece of wood really that you can drill a hole in. So just any old bit of scrap hardwood really you could drill a long hole in it with a drill and then whittle it down to a round profile so that you make a tube of wood and that's how you start making your whistle. So I hope that's been interesting, thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.